Let's begin our discussion on 1,3 dipolar reactions by defining what a 1,3 dipole compound is. So here we have two examples, two different examples of 1,3 dipole compounds. Now a 1,3 dipole compound is simply a compound for which a good neutral resonance form cannot be drawn. In other words, these compounds have a clear and distinct separation of charge. In this example, we have a negative charge on the carbon and a positive charge on the nitrogen. Likewise, on this example, this is known as an ozone molecule. We have a positive charge on this middle oxygen and a negative charge on this end oxygen. Both of these are examples of 1,3 dipole compounds. So 1,3 dipole compounds can react with alkenes in a reaction known as 1,3 dipolar reaction. So let's look at a specific example with ozone. Let's combine ozone with an alkene. Now recall that ozone is a molecule that predominantly is found in the upper atmosphere. What it does is it shields us from UV radiation. Recall that UV radiation is simply electromagnetic radiation or waves that can damage our DNA leading to distinct problems such as for example cancer. So let's get back to our ozonolysis reaction. So ozonolysis is simply a 1,3 dipolar reaction in which we have the ozone molecule combining with an alkene in a three-step mechanism. So let's begin by examining our first step. In the first step, we have the two molecules, the reactants, combining in such a way in a one-step concerted mechanism to form a primary ozonine. So let's examine exactly what happens. So the two electrons found in the pi bond of the carbon-carbon bond attacks this oxygen displacing this double bond, the two electrons in the pi bond of the oxygen-oxygen, those two electrons go onto this oxygen, and then at the same time, lone pair of electrons on the end oxygen attacks this carbon, forming the following primary ozonide. Now, in the second step, we have a rearrangement taking place. Notice that this was a forward 1,3 dipolar reaction. And this is actually a reverse 1,3 dipolar reaction. In the second step, we have this carbon-carbon bond breaking. This goes onto this carbon-oxygen forming a pi bond and displacing this sigma bond, the lone pair of electrons now end up on this oxygen forming the following two intermediates. So now we have a carbonyl compound as well as a carbonyl oxide. So we have a clear separation of charge between this carbon, a positive charge, and this oxygen, a negative charge. This molecule is neutral. So, before we look at the third step, something must take place in order for this reaction, the third step, to take place. What happens is this molecule, the carbonyl oxide, flips. It flips in such a way so that we have a good stereochemical arrangement. So that now these electrons can easily interact with the protons in the nucleus. What happens now is the lone pair of electrons on this oxygen, which is found here because it flips, attacks this carbon displacing this pi bond. The electrons in the pi bond attacks this carbon that has a positive charge forming the final product known as the final ozonide. Now, let's ask the following important question. Why is it that this molecule, this ozonide, rearranges to the final ozonide? Why is there a clear distinction between these two molecules? So, why is there a preference for the final product in this three-step mechanism uh, reaction known as ozonolysis? So, to answer the question, let's examine the strength of the bonds, the types of bonds 
found in this primary molecule and this final molecule. Let's compare those bonds and let's examine which one is thermodynamically more stable. So here we have a chart. Now recall that it takes approximately 40 kilocals per mole of energy to break this oxygen-oxygen bond. Likewise, it takes approximately 88 kilocals per mole of energy to break one mole of carbon-oxygen bond. So let's count the number of bonds we have in this molecule, in this cyclic ring. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's tally out the types of bonds we have. So notice that for the primary, we have two oxygen-oxygen bonds. So oxygen-oxygen, oxygen-oxygen, we have two of them. While in this final ozonide, we have only one found here on the bottom. So, what about the carbon carbons? Well, we have one in the primary shown here and zero none in the final. Remember, we're only counting this cyclic ring here. We're not counting these uh, bonds. And finally, we have the carbon oxygen. So, in the primary, we have two carbon oxygens, while in the final, we have a total of four carbon oxygens. And because these bonds are more stable and we have more of these bonds in the final product, that means the final product is much more stable than this primary product. And that means because it's thermodynamically more stable, stable, that means that this will be favored when we have enough energy in our system. So, our conclusion. Ozone reacts with an alkene, as shown here, in a three-step mechanism driven by thermodynamic stability. In other words, the, the reason that this ozonolysis 1,3 dipole reaction takes place is because we want to go from this relatively unstable primary product to this relatively stable final product. So in the next lecture, we're going to examine applications of these reactions. In other words, when are 1,3 dipolar reactions, and specifically the ozonolysis reaction, used? And why is it useful in organic chemistry?